In this video, we're going to look at three different fusion nodes that you probably don't use, but you definitely should. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I've created a fusion composition for each of the nodes that I wanted to talk about. So let's take a look at those now. Right now we're in the edit page. I have the first one selected so we can head over now to the fusion page. Now we're in the fusion page and let me quickly first show you what we're looking at here. On the left hand side in this part of the node tree, we have this right here, which is our text one. And that's on our background, which is this black background here. Then we have our text two, which is actually this text right here. And that's on our orange background. If you follow the arrows, we've merged these together. And this goes into our media out, which is what we're looking at up here. So let's pretend that we want to put maybe a blur on this text right here. So I'll grab a blur from the toolbar here, drag it until our line turns two different colors, let go. And now we have our effect in place. So what I can do is come up over here to the inspector and adjust the blur. And now our text is blurry. Let's say we wanted to do the same thing with the text over here. What I could do is come over here, drag in another effect, do the same thing, potentially come in here and copy this, come over here, paste it there. And now we have the same result, but that's too many steps. So I'll go ahead and delete this from here. Not only is it too many steps, but if you make an adjustment on one, you'll have to copy and paste that into the other one every single time. So if there's an effect that you want to keep the same between two different elements, you can use an instance. The way that we do this is you can select the effect. I'm going to hit Control C on my keyboard or Command C on a Mac. I'm going to select our merge and hit Control Shift V. So what we've essentially done is made a copy of this blur we, and we've tied them together. So if I come up here and I change this to maybe 21.3 on the blur size, if I select the other node, the blur one, the initial one we had, it's also 21.3. Now, by the way, if you want to keep your node tree clean and this green line is a little bit distracting, you can right click, choose options, and then deselect show instance links. Now, even though those aren't linked, they will still behave the same way. Again, right now in our inspector, we're looking at the original effect. Here, if I choose the instance, you'll notice that the parameters are outlined in green. Now let's say that in this case, for example, we're happy with the blur size, but we don't want the effect to be strong on one, but we do want it to be stronger on the other. Any adjustments that we make now, everything is tied together. So in other words, if I bring down this blend to maybe 0.62, like I did here, it affects both of them. What we can do is de-instance one of the parameters that we don't want to be affected on both. Let me show you what I mean. If I right click on blend, I can come down to D instance. So now if I bring this one back up to, let's say maybe around eight, nine, you may already notice it in this window, but if we head back to the original blur, that one hasn't changed. We still have the blur size of 21.3, but now the blend is not being affected. Having said that, if we do want to reconnect them, if we're having second thoughts and we do want them to be exactly the same, I can right click here and choose reinstance. And now we're back to being exactly the same. One quick note I wanted to mention, we can actually come down here and de-instance the node itself. The difference is we can't reconnect them after the fact. So I can come down here, right click, de-instance, and now both of these nodes are independent. As I mentioned, if I right click, there's no option to choose reinstance to reconnect them. So you just want to keep that in mind. The next note I want to show you is great for organization. If I head up to clips here, let's pull up our next fusion composition. What we're looking at here is the video camera effect, and this is built right into DaVinci Resolve. This is actually a fusion composition that was created and grouped together. If I double click on this effect right here, we'll be able to see the entire node tree. When looking at this node tree, it may be a little bit difficult to try to determine which node leads to another node, especially with this one going right through the middle here. So what we can actually do is start adding pipe router nodes. And to show you what those do, what I'm going to do is take this group right here, move this down just a little bit. I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard or Option on a Mac, click this line right here, and it adds this pipe router node. So essentially what this does, instead of all these diagonal lines crisscrossing across your node tree, what you can do is add these pipe router nodes that essentially don't do much in the sense that they don't impact 
the footage in any way, but they're here for that one purpose, to organize your node tree to make it easier to read. If you notice, we actually have one right here. If I select it and then I hit delete, we have this diagonal line right here. Now, of course, we can try to maybe move this up, but now we have this diagonal line intersecting our line right here. Then again, we can maybe move this up, move this down, but as I mentioned before, just to make it cleaner and easier to read, we can add in those pipe router nodes. I know that we have this long line here, which would make sense for us to maybe add a pipe router node on this line, bring it down and then bring it over. But if I was to hold down Alt and click on the line, it doesn't allow us to do anything. And I believe that has to do with it going into the input here on the left-hand side. What we could potentially do is take this merge and move it up here. I could click here on this line, hold down Alt. This part here is a little confusing, so what I could do is maybe select everything here and just move that over a little bit. And although it's not ideal in this case, you can see how adding these pipe router nodes will allow you to make your node tree a little bit easier to read. So now we can take a look at our last fusion composition. Here I have our background node, which is this color here on the left-hand side. I piped that into our color corrector node. I made an adjustment here over in our inspector and I have the media out showing in this window. So this is a new result. The last node that I wanna show you is a wireless node. So if I press control and space, it brings up this select toolbox. And if I type in wireless, we have our wireless link. I'm going to hit add. Now by itself, this node doesn't really do anything other than its primary function of allowing you to have the same effect affect another node without having one of these lines connected to it. Let me show you so that it makes more sense. Let me disconnect this right here from our media out. So now we have nothing in our window because I'm still showing the media out in this window. Right now, the wireless link is looking for some type of input, but there is no place for you to actually grab a line and try to connect it to the wireless link. What you have to do, and in this case, the input will be the color corrector, is drag it from our node tree down here up into the input box up here. So I'll take our color corrector, drag it over here, and now you'll notice where it says color corrector one. So that means the wireless link is taking this node from over here and acting as if they're connected. So all I have to do now is take the output, which is the only option we have on the wireless link, and I'll put that into our media out. And here we are, back to viewing our media out. As I mentioned before, there's nothing connecting these two, but if I head over to our color corrector and move this around, we can still make adjustments without needing to connect these two nodes. Now in this particular case, it doesn't make sense. This is an oversimplified node tree, so I wouldn't do it this way. It of course would make a lot more sense for you to just connect the output of this color corrector directly into the media out. But if you had a really large and a really convoluted node tree, if you didn't use something like the pipe router that I showed you previously, you could use this wireless link to move it out of the way, once again, just so that everything is organized. If you like tips like this, please subscribe to the channel. I'll have a lot more. If you have a suggestion about what you would like to see, please leave a comment letting me know. If you're curious about some of the gear that I use, that's linked in the description below. There's also a link to my socials, including Twitter, as I always mention, I'm pretty active over there, so if you wanted to chat, follow me over there. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.